Welcome into the Greater Texas Ford Dealers inaugural Female Athlete of the Month. From Texarkana to El Paso, the Panhandle to San Angelo, the Permian Basin to East Texas, Waco, Wichita Falls to Lubbock, and many points in between. We celebrate the remarkable achievements of female high school athletes based on performances on and off the field and courts. From Class 6A to private schools, it's the Greater Texas Ford Dealers Female Athlete of the Month. Joining me now, the Iron Eagle of the Longview Christian School, the one and only Kenzie Miller, who just so <laughs> happens to be our private school winner of your Greater Texas Ford Dealers Female Athlete of the Month. Well, Kenzie, congratulations. You do it all. When you heard that you won this honor and was the best in Texas, what did you think? I was stunned. I When he told me, I just couldn't believe it. I was, you know, it was funny because I didn't go to school today because that day because I had a senior year and I got exempt from all my finals. And and so I just didn't have to go. And then we had advice chapel. And so I was like, I'm going to go give advice to my underclassmen. Well, everybody shows up and I'm like, what are y'all doing here? Well, turns out they honored me with this award. And I was just like stunned. But now that I can actually think about it, it's just such an honor to be recognized as, you know, female athlete of the month so the best in texas well there's no doubt about it and you do so many different sports you are at such a high level academically tennis volleyball basketball just an outstanding career highlighted by leadership and accomplishment as a student athlete why is that so important to you well for me i like to be busy i like to stay busy and just to you know i've always had a heart for athletic stuff I mean, from the day one where I could touch a soccer ball, I was playing soccer. And, you know, it's just been a thing. And, like, when I find something I'm good at, I really like to, you know, pursue that and grow in that. And I think that's really what athletics is for me. It's a place for me to get my mind away from the other things where I can enjoy the other parts of life by doing something that incorporates a ball or a net or other teammates. I love being around people, too. So that's another aspect of why. Well, looking at your school and the beauty of your school in a small school like yours is they want you to play everything. Um, right. <laughs> how has that school shaped you and how have you been able to play at such a high level in all these different sports? Because you don't see that at the other schools. Well, for me, you know, for me, it's really easy because I, like I said, I like to be busy and I like to be any and everything at everything all the time. You know, I'm just one of those people, extroverts, some call it. And so, um, and so at my school, there, it's never been a situation for me where I haven't wanted to do things. The coaches are amazing. Like I could go for hours about how amazing they are. And not only do they pour into you physically, but they also pour into you spiritually, which is amazing as well. Um, so yeah, that's really why, you know, I like being involved in so many things because of the surrounding people that pour into you. And it's just, I can't, I don't, I, so I can't even put into words how amazing they are. So. Well, you know, I look at your basketball career and uh, it's fun to see how you fill out that stat sheet. I mean, you do everything, you know, you can shoot, you can do the dirty work. Uh, what do you pride yourself on as far as basketball? Because you have been such a team MVP. Yes. So basketball, I didn't originally start playing basketball until I got into fresh. Uh, I was a freshman in high school. And so like locked in really. And so when I was a freshman, I was just still filling it out kind of like every other freshman would. I was riding the bench most of the games. Um, my teammates were incredible. Um, but that's when I really realized my passion for basketball. And another trait that I have is how I always am willing to help in any way that I can. And so like that year really grew me in the spot of like, be there, be the practice coach will put you in and then you'll get on the court. Like it's like baby steps. And so I had, in order to be on the court, I had to learn all these things. I had to learn how to shoot. I had to learn how to play defense. I had to learn how to pass a ball. I mean, yeah, like just the simple things like that. And so it really, you know, looking back at it now, it really makes a difference of focusing in on the smaller steps. So you can make those bigger steps 
um, in your basketball career. And I really think that's what I did. Well, um, you've done nothing but make a difference at that school. I mean, you have won the highest honor athletically at your school, the Eagle Award winner for outstanding leadership and performance as a student athlete there at Longview Christian School. You have to play three sports. You did that extremely well. You have to have a 3.5 GPA. You blew right by that. You're such a great representation of the school. What did it mean to you to be someone that could achieve that amazing honor that you know that you'll look back and there's so few that have been able to do that? Right. And now that I am thinking about how I could have possibly won this award, um, you know, I really personally, I feel like I do a great example on the court and encouraging as in like encouraging my teammates and, you know, really driving them to be the best that they can be while at the same time being coachable and learning from your coaches and being able to take that and use that to help your team as well. And so I think that in order for you to be a great leader, you have to be coachable. I mean, there's not a, there's not a situation where you can be a good leader and be like, oh, I don't want to be coachable. Like, that's just not how it works, you know. And so getting this award, it's really been like an eye opener to, wow, you can really do this. Like you, you're you seen as a leader and you're seen as somebody who's made a difference and you're seen as somebody who is going to be remembered as an Iron Eagle or the Eagle Award. So. Pretty impressive stuff. Love hearing that. Um, with all these sports that you play, what is your favorite? Mm, so me and my friends talk about this all the time. Uh, I played soccer for nine years. Uh, I never played at the school that I, you know, but I love watching soccer. Yeah, um, that's about said. I love watching soccer and I love the team aspect of soccer um, that it incorporates because you can't just dribble the ball all the way back from defense to forward position, you know? And so I really liked that, liked that about soccer. But when I quit soccer and picked up volleyball, not quit soccer, when I didn't, when I stopped playing freshman year, um, picked up volleyball, I really liked how you were able to make a difference in the point. So sometimes in soccer, you would, you know, you get a beautiful cross and they kick it in and the person that kicked it in gets all the credit, you know, but in a, and then the person that had the assist didn't really, you know, do anything. And like, they didn't get recognized. Well, in volleyball, you kind of all did it because the ball can't touch the ground. And it's just amazing. And the same way in basketball, like um, you shoot an awesome shot and you make it and, you know, the crowd goes wild. So, um, yeah. Well, I'm looking at volleyball, too. You played the libero, which is such a vital yeah. a position for that whole team to, to be successful. And I know you suffered a concussion and had to back off that a little bit. What was that adversity like going through? Well, yeah, that was a really hard season of life for me um, because I couldn't do the things that I loved. And that was probably the worst season ever, if I'm being completely honest. Um not as in like the coach wise or something that um, physically, I mean, obviously it was physically because I was sitting out due to a concussion, but mentally it was the hardest season ever because you had to sit there and watch your team win or lose and you couldn't do anything about it. I mean, you could cheer, but with a concussion, you can't really scream really loud or you get a headache. Um, and so it was just really hard to just sit there and encourage when you know that you should be out there. But I think that's where I really kind of grew was, you know, in that aspect of like encouraging your teammates. Um, even when you can't be on the court, it like put me back into my freshman position where I had to encourage people to be able to get to that upper position so that when I finally got over my concussion, I played the worst game of my life. I'm being honest <laughs> um, because I was so scared of diving. I, I was just, you know, cause all the medical things that, you know, if you hit your head and you're not ready, you know, you could brain bleed. I don't know. I don't even know what, but um, that was a very interesting season. But to answer your question from earlier, I do think that my favorite sport would be volleyball because yeah. of the team the team aspect of it. So I forgot to answer that completely. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, maybe the concussion added to that. No, I'm kidding. Right, I'm kidding. right, right. Um, no, yeah. But totally. thank goodness you overcame that. And, you know, people don't realize how violent volleyball is. 
Um, yeah. I see the girls always diving in the libero position. You were the defensive MVP mm-hmm. of that team. So thank goodness and thank God that you were able to overcome that. Now, in right. hoops, I know you're incredibly assertive. <laughs> you led your team to the playoffs, first team all district, team MVP, multiple life to all tournament teams, and you won the coaches award for that as well. What do you like about that game? I mean, like I was saying earlier, freshman year, I really, you know, started my passion for basketball. And I couldn't think about a season where I couldn't, I, where I didn't want to play basketball. Um, like I said earlier, I just wanted to keep busy. And on top of that, it's an amazing sport. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm aggressive, um, both on the court and kind of on the bench. Um, but, <laughs> um, but about the sport, like I love, I just love how it plays out. I mean, I, I haven't played a sport like it. Um, it's just, it's just amazing. And to celebrate with your team when big accomplishments happen or to cry with your team when you lose a hard game or to sit there and get a yelling from your coach because you're not playing as good as you should have been. Like, even though like those times in the moment seem so, eh, you know, like, nah, I don't really want to be here. Um, I really think that that's what makes basketball what basketball is because without all of the intense, I mean, cause it's only what, 30, 30 or so games. Yeah. 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 It's, it go by, it go, it's a, it's a quick season and it's like multiple times a week you have games. And so I think that's what I kind of like about it. Like I said earlier, I like to keep myself busy. So it's a very like that kind of sport. Um, but yeah, it's just an amazing sport. I love yeah. it. And, you know, you know, I was thinking too, um, you know, with your school being so small, I know you really never had the numbers to compete. You only had six girls on your team. Yeah. And, you know, if someone wasn't feeling good, you're down to five really fast. If somebody gets hurt, my goodness, you're down to four. And right. I know that happened in a tournament where you actually led the way. You were down to four players and you actually pulled off a victory. How mm-hmm. is that team able to compete with the schools that are bigger and had so many more numbers? Because I know the second half would come along and there would be that second team coming onto the floor and you're out there still. Yeah, uh, those were the most challenging games I've ever played in my life, which were most of them, which uh, if you put yourself in a challenging situation, most of the time you'll come out with something out of it, whether it's a lesson or a victory. Um, So in that tournament, I remember thinking to myself, one, I was frustrated. And when I get frustrated, I turn on my my uh, vision and I'm like, let's go. Let's get it done. Like eight minutes left. Push yourself. That I took the biggest nap after that game. Um, <laughs> um, but on the other hand, when we were playing, say, like FBA, that's a very big school in Dallas. And like Greenville, they had a lot of girls. And previous years, there there was Garland and Ovilla. Like, those were our very, very challenging teams. And so because they were in the Dallas Metroplex area. And so they were there were a lot of girls. And... I'm not saying that it was all physical, like all, but there was like this mental part of it where you have to push yourself and you have to make sure that you know that you can do this, that your coach has taught you well enough to you, you y'all can pull it out, obviously a win. And secondly, you have to trust your teammates that they'll do their job as long as you do yours. And so in that situation, when you're playing those teams and you're outnumbered incredibly on the bench and on the court, like, and our, our team was pretty short. Like I'm five, three and I'm the third tallest. So <laughs> oh, wow. I think I don't anyways. Um, well, if I have basketball shoes on, I'm third tallest. <laughs> um, <laughs> and your hair gives you a couple extra inches. Right. Too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like, even that was really hard because you have those big posts that are like six something and you know, you're just standing there and you have to jump. And so every, this, this just makes it so sweet though, because when you actually get a rebound in that situation, you're like, I did it. Like, like <laughs> I got up there. Hold up. Like, wait, I boxed out. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> um, and so yeah, it just it comes with hard challenges both mentally and physically. Um, but I really think that in order for you to grow as an athlete, you need those situations where you're outnumbered both 
on the court and on the bench. Well, so. very well said. And I know, you know, you also played tennis. Uh, you mm -hmm. didn't even pick that up really till your senior year and you get newcomer of the year. Right. How were you able to pull that off and be so good and get all the way to the regionals? Well, I actually joined a week late in this season. Um, I, <laughs> this is such a funny story. I, my friends were all playing and I had nothing to do, but I was like, oh, it's senior year. Like I'm going to get real busy in like the end of May. Like it's going to be hectic. Like I'm not going to want to sport. Well, it turns out tennis ends before that anyways. So I was talking with my coach, which is also my volleyball coach. She's like, yeah, you should play. And I was talking with my friends and they're like, yeah, you should play. And then after a while, like I got invited to go and play tennis with all my friends, um, like off, off of practice, like it wasn't like a practice or anything. And um, I played and I was like, hold on, wait, I'm good at this. And so, like I said earlier, like when I find that I'm good at something, I just, you know, push the gas, like, let's see how far we can get there. And so I think that's what I really did in tennis season. Um, I had a blast. I mean, going to regionals, um, my first thing of the, my first match of the whole thing was um, against the state runner up. Wow. And so I didn't know that when I played her, I mean, she was incredible. She's an amazing person. She was really nice. And I'm very thankful for that game or the match or whatever it's called. I don't know the lingo still. Um, <laughs> it's just a hobby for you and you're in yeah. regionals, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, that sounds really bad to say, but you know, I just kind of picked it up and like previous years I've gone and played pickleball with my friends and you know, all the tennis people that are probably watching are going to get offended that oh pickleball like it's nothing like tennis i'm not yeah. saying that. tennis is incredibly hard and like you have to make sure your reflexes are there and you have to get fit into but i reached out to a couple of guys from laterno which is the the campus here in longview and they actually took me and took the time to go and like teach me like the basic form and all that kind of stuff so i'm very thankful for them because without that i would be like just swinging my arms making sure the ball hits the racket um Hey, don't discount, don't discount pickleball because it's a very, very big deal. Well, no. I know that Travis McMillan has uh, been a guy that's been very inspirational to you. He's the athletic director at that school. Yes, you sir. have worked under him. He's been a mentor to you. What are the biggest lessons you have learned from him? The biggest lessons I've learned from Travis McMillan is um, to never give up. You know, he was, he was there in my concussions phase and that was, I'm not going to cry. Um, but that, that was a very hard time in my life. Like I said, a minute ago, so I'm not going to go into detail. And he was just always rooting for me and always cheering me on. Um, he's just such an incredible guy. And so that's one of the lessons that I pulled from him. Um, the second lesson that I really pulled from him was to be the best that you can be. Um, that kind of goes into never giving up, uh, to push you to be the person that you have, you can be. Um, because sometimes as athletes, we like to kind of like running, um, you set your, you're like, Oh, I'm going to run two miles. Well, you could actually run five if you wanted to, if you pushed your body to that, but mentally you're already like, okay, at two miles, I'm going to stop. And so as an athlete, you really have to push yourself. And I feel like in those hard times, Mr. McMillan was my mentality on that. He was pushing me when I didn't have the drive to push myself. And so I mean, it's not just me. He does that to everybody he sees too. Like you, if he hears that somebody's not playing a sport, he'll be like, Hey, Kenzie, I need you to go convince them to play. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. And so when I can't convince them, he'll convince them. I don't know how he does it, but he's just such an amazing person. He's willing to pour into people. He's willing to spend his time in the right places. And he's willing to, you know, just, you know, be him. And I don't really know how to explain it, but he's just such an amazing person. Well, I know his mom came out of retirement to coach you, yes. uh, Amy Nolan. Uh, how about her? Uh, how how inspirational has she been in your athletic prowess? Okay. Whew. So coming well, off- Try not of, to make you cry. <laughs> right, right. I'm just a really emotional person. So, um, <laughs> so coming off of a coach that's been there for two years and then coming from- freshman year where I had a coach, then he left and having a coach for two years, thinking that she would stay for my senior year. That was really hard. 
And so when I heard that she was coming out of retirement, I had two feelings. One side was, yeah, we have a coach, like, let's go. Like, at least we have a sport, you know? And on the other side, I was like, but it's, you know, it's going to be great because Mr. McMillan knows what he's doing. And so one's serious and one's kind of silly. Um, but I have to tell you, she did make me cry one practice because I was just being an absolute like dork. Like <laughs> I wasn't making any layups, my free throws. Oh my goodness. Like I remember that practice running suicide until I made a free throw. It was just something. And then, and then I look back and it's like, you know, but how well did you play in the next game? Because she pushed you there. You know, like I didn't think about that in the situation. I was just like, Oh, coach is like making me run for this. <laughs> no, but, but looking back at, you know, she, and she's just an amazing person too. I mean, from our car rides to talking, you know, cause sometimes, you know, our, our team was so small that we could all fit in her suburban. So we didn't have to take a bus to the games. So it would be like the girls in the suburban and the guys in the bus. Um, <laughs> and so I'll remember all of our girl talks and like whatever stays, in, what happened, what's, what's said in the car stays in the car. <laughs> and so looking back, the hurt of that other coach leaving, but the joy that the new coach brought was really extreme. And so I'm very thankful for her and everything that she's done for me. That's awesome. Well, it's such a small school. Your other coach is Amy, too, the coaching Amy's. Uh, hey, good. Uh, with the uh, the volleyball team, how about her? What what kind of lessons did you learn from her? Man, she has been my rock this year. Um, not only in athletics to push me to who I want to be and as an athlete, but as a person. Like, she's, she's always in her office. I can go and talk her ear off because I have all these free periods, and she'll just sit there and be like, yeah. Or like, maybe you shouldn't do that. Or maybe you shouldn't <laughs> say that. You know, like she's just really, I love her so much. And to, I couldn't have enough time and I probably don't have enough time to say everything about her that I love. So I'm just going to cover a few things. I love how she's always there. I love how she's always in her office. I love how she's always, you know, being supportive or being loving in the way that you'll be like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't say that, you know, or maybe you shouldn't, you know, go and throw the ball at a girl's face. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. See, I told you I'm aggressive, but I'm not that aggressive. I promise. <laughs> um, and so that's the first part. And then the second part is how she always has advice. I don't know how she does it. I don't know if she reads books, but she always just has something that's like, you can take away the conversation like you can take away from the conversation um and so that's the second thing and then the third thing would be that you know she's just an amazing coach i you know coming from chelsea Purefoy, my coach and then having her again with kind of the basketball situation it was like you know a loss for a coach and then a new one coming in and not knowing what to expect, but the amount of joy that she brought. And I couldn't have asked for a better coach for my senior year. I really haven't. And I, you know, looking back in the times, it was just kind of, you know, like, I don't know if I'm ready to have another coach when I, this one's leaving me, you know? And so, but she's been amazing. She's like I said earlier, she pushes you to be the person that you have your goals to be. And, you know, one thing that I really loved about her and Kinsey Cheatham, she was the assistant coach. Um, they would make us write down goals before the game and hand them in. And so keeping us accountable to the short-term goals that we had was really great because it made you realize that you, like I said earlier, you are an athlete and you are the athlete that you could be if you could put your mind to it. Um, and so, yeah, she's just amazing. Just inspirational hearing that story. And I know another person that's very important in your life is your bestie, your best friend, Maddie. Uh, yes. talk about her. The two of you play volleyball and basketball. You pretty much do everything together. You're, you, it's hard to separate you guys from the hip. How important yep. has she been in your life at school? You know, uh, coming out of a friend group or actually I was eating lunch with the principal for half of the school year because I had no friends and, you know, cause freshman year, my, all, I hung out with a lot of juniors, um, and they all left the school for multiple reasons. Um, 
and they made a very big impact in my life. But knowing that everybody left me, I was just kind of there. And so coming into that next year, um, people were there, but I like to feel for people before I fully dive into friendships because I'm a lover and I love loving people and I love caring. And so before I open up my heart to somebody, I really like to see and feel out who they are. And so for a while there, I was just eating lunch with the principal who just happened to be one of the biggest mentors in my high school career. Um, and so she would motivate me. And then, but then that summer after that happened, um, me and Maddie really became friends and I'm so incredibly thankful for both her and her family. Um, you know, when times got rough, they were there. Um, and my parents too, obviously, but you know, some things you can't tell your parents, but you can tell your best friend. <laughs> um, so she, I haven't thought about how to explain her. Yeah. Her. Well, um, I do. I did see some on TMZ that you love coffee and you love a lot of it. And you like going to seven brew coffee and you actually collect you know, the straw wrappers and you yes. put that all together and you poured it down to Maddie. So yep. first thing I'm thinking of, what did she think about all that? And uh, what is up with that? Okay. So I started my seven brew, not addiction. Cause I can, I'm obviously drinking water, um, <laughs> but um, for some reason, the seven brew straw wrapper thing, I don't know where that came from. But I just had a bunch in my console. It was summer, the summer we became friends and we had a bunch of my console and she couldn't drive. And so she was always in my passenger seat. And she was like, you know, you should really keep these. And so I was like, okay. So like I started keeping them and they're in my glove box in like a cute little bag. Like they're just, it's not trash in my head. I'm normally a very organized person and you can ask anybody that, but for some reason, these straw wrappers have a really good sentimental you know, thing. And so I passed those on to her because what our school does is we have a senior banquet, which is kind of like prom, but without dancing. I take that back. It's nothing like prom. We honor <laughs> the seniors. <laughs> we honor the seniors and like we have this big dance. I mean, not big dance. We have this big dinner and we will things to people. Well, one thing that I willed off was my Strava seven boot straw wrappers. <laughs> so that's how that got down to Maddie because now she can drive. And now that she had the idea, she can now hold them in her glove box and it can take up room in her car. Um, so eventually I'll get all of them together and pass it down to her. But um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I know you come from a great family. There's some athletes there. Uh, your dad played football at Arances Pass. Your mom, she played soccer at Red Oak. She was kind of a band nerd as well. Um, she did really well, all district in marching band. How much of your parents meant to you just driving you around all these competitions and making sure you got your uniforms and all that? How much have they yes. meant? They've meant so much. Words can't even explain. Something that I always you know remember and I tell the younger classmen, I'm like, do y'all have y'all shoes or do y'all have y'all's knee pads or do y'all have everything that y'all need? Well, that's because I made the mistake of leaving. First time I ever played on varsity volleyball. I left my knee. No, it was shoes. I left my shoes in my athletic locker and we were about an hour away. Oh. It was an hour away. And so, you know, this is in sophomore year. So I had Chelsea Purifor as my coach and I call my mom bawling. I'm like, <laughs> mom, I need you to bring me my shoes right now. Like I'm playing varsity tonight. I cannot be like a letdown. Like I have to prove myself tonight. Like this is my shot. So she, before... Before I even finished the phone call, she had already gotten her keys, headed to school, getting my stuff. She wasn't even planning on coming to that game, um, but she was just there. And so um, her being just willing to like bring me my stuff when I forgot it or bringing me a smoothie because she knows I haven't eaten since breakfast sometimes, um, you know, just being willing and also being my cheerleader in the stands. I'm pretty sure if you asked anybody from my school, they would tell you that she is the biggest cheerleader. We don't have cheerleaders at our school, but I feel like <laughs> if we did, she would be the cheer coach. Um, <laughs> just because she's that person. 
Um, but yes, that has meant so much to me. And, you know, there's some games where I've been annoyed and I've been like, you know, I really just wish that you didn't say anything. And I sit here and regret every time I said that to her because, you know, before you know it, it's over. And she, she doesn't have a person on the court until my younger sister grows up. Um, and so, you know, just realizing that she's living too, just made me kind of realize how valuable she was in the, in the stands cheering me on and my dad as well like my dad kind of gets the brunt side of things um because I'll be like dad I should just sit here and we'll be in the truck sometimes in the, in his truck and I'll be like dad I need you to just sit here shut up and listen like I'm just gonna vent and it's normally right after games so I'm very heated um very like <laughs> like you know and so he'll just sit there and listen and I don't know how he does it but he does it and he'll, he'll be like, okay, so what can you do? What can you do next? Like, what are you doing next? And I was like, I don't want to hear that. You know, like thinking about that, like right after the game that you probably played bad in, like, you don't want to hear like, what are you going to do next? But you know, him really being like, what are you doing next? Okay. I'm going to try harder or, okay. I'm going to set this goal for me before the next game. And so having my mom in the stands kind of cheering me on, but having my dad in the truck being like, okay, logistically, what are you doing next? Like, you can't just sit here and complain about your problems and not do anything about it, you know? And so I think that both of them and my younger sister, Maddie, um, she's normally with my mom half the time, but she'll deck out in like face paint and pom poms and all the things. And so I'm incredibly thankful for her because, um, I feel like sometimes I don't recognize her enough as I should, but you know, she'll be like, sissy, I wrote, I made you a poster or I made you this, or I said a cheer. Like I led one of the cheers for you. And <laughs> uh, you know, she really means a lot for me because there's a nine year age gap. And so having her look up to me is such a motivation because, you know, it's just kind of like, okay, if she looks up to you, then she'll probably become, some version of you therefore what are you passing down to her and so I think that's something that's really like made me want to be better both on the court in the house and a sister in general so yeah I know and you you're such a great all-around kid you know I think about you know all academic you're such a great leader you love pouring things down to people you talked about Maddie uh you know pouring it down to Bella the phenom freshman that's going to be amazing at that school and mm -hmm. you also lead your church group your youth church church, yes. church group uh talk about the leadership side of things and why that's so important to you um like I mentioned earlier being coachable that's in all aspects of life if you cannot sit down and listen to someone, you're probably not going to be a good leader. If you can't sit down and take in what they're pouring down to you, it's probably not going to happen. Um, you're probably going to lead people in the wrong direction. And so for me, looking back at all the times that I thought like, okay, I already know this. Well, they were just telling you because they see it in you. And so um, to be the leader you know, for a while there, I was like, well, why am I the leader? Well, why? And I didn't tell anybody this with my parents. Um, and I was like, you know, it's so tiring to just always pour into people and nobody pours into you. And that's the season of life where I knew that I wasn't coachable. And so that season really like, it was bad um, because I wasn't being coachable. And in both my youth group and on the, on the field or court, sorry. Um, and so to be a leader, you have to be coachable. I think I'm going to die on that hill, but you have to be coachable and you have to understand that just because you're a leader doesn't mean you're the man in charge. Um, your coaches and your youth pastor is, and the person above you is, um, but in, all, in that you also have to have the strength to go through those times when you're not being poured into, but you still have to pour into other people. So and well so, said. Yeah. Right. That is just awesome. Um, yeah. you know, I, I know that in your life, you've had a little touch of celebrity. Uh, you, you know, you love music, everything from Christian music to country to rap, you know, right. name it, you like it. 
Um, but you had an opportunity to meet Christian singer Blanca, and she taught you the renegade dance. Tell me about that <laughs> experience and how much did you enjoy that? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start off with that was kind of a blur for me, um, <laughs> mainly because it was so early in the morning. And second of all, because um, it was COVID, I'm pretty sure. And so there was like this youth, there was like this women's conference at this church nearby. And I remember her being there and me and my friends were like, oh, wouldn't that be cool if I did the renegade, you know, back when Charlie D'Amelio was a thing and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so <laughs> just teaching her the dance and like getting it on video, it's so awkward now watching that and being like oh but like <laughs> but to be able to say like I taught a celebrity a uh a TikTok dance is kind of crazy um I forget to think about it sometimes because I forget it happened like I said it was a blur but it was just funny that is just great well looking at uh, the next step for you now you've been through graduation it's amazing how quick it flies by right. um what are your college plans and do you think you'll play any sports in college so i actually just you know i had my graduation party so i can tell you all about it um so i will not be playing in college mainly because it takes up too much time uh academically um Somebody told me, they were like, yeah, it's more of a lifestyle and a job than a passion, you know, and and not, not to say like, you can't have passion in your job. I'm not saying that, but for me, if it's something that I'm getting paid for or something that I'm getting, you know, it just wears you out. And so for me to be able to enjoy the things that I love, which is athletes and sports and athletic things. Um, I really didn't think that college sports would be my thing, um, because I really want to focus on both my academic and my family, my ac academic stuff and my family, um, cause both of those mean incredibly, an incredible amount to me. And I think that if I had to trade in being a college athlete to for all of that kind of it it just wouldn't be worth it to me and not to say that I won't be doing stuff on campus still like there's sand volleyball courts um there's intramural sports which I definitely will be looking into and probably doing sometime uh when I figure out everything on campus but what school, now what school I, is it that you're going to University of Texas at Tyler oh okay you'll love yes. it out there yep well it's beautiful campus. I'm going to major in kinesiology and hopefully become an athletic trainer. So I'm still in the athletic, you know, so. Well, a big congratulations to you. We can't wish any more success. It's really fun to celebrate you here. Congratulations on being the private school winner of your Greater Texas Ford Dealers Female Athlete of the Month. Thank you. Your Greater Texas Ford Dealers is so proud to recognize the hard work, dedication, perseverance, and passion of so many Texas high school female athletes who inspire us all. Here's this month's winners. And don't forget, you can see their interviews at Greater TX Ford for Greater Texas Ford Dealers. From Class 1A to 6A, plus private schools, we celebrate them all. Thanks so much for watching the Greater Texas Ford Dealers inaugural Female Athlete of the Month. See you next time.